Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to go back into Age 2's past. No, I mean further. We're going all the way back to the Alpha. This was Age of Empires 2 in 1998, over a year before it was released. Now, someone sent me a tip that you can actually find this really easily if you look for it. And in fact, there's a few Alpha and Beta versions that are floating around. Now, right off the top, I apologize for the pretty awful resolution. For anyone who wasn't around in the late 90s, monitors at that time were mostly designed to be beds for cats and the display was just kind of an afterthought. The screen was also a completely different ratio and unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that, so we're just gonna have to live with it. Anyway, let's take a look. First thing you'll notice, this does not look anything like Age of Empires 2. We have our town center here, these are my resources. I think it's wood, food, gold, and stone, and then there's a mystery resource that I think was taken out of the game. Let's take a look at what we can build. We can build houses, okay, they look a little different. And we can make a mill. That makes sense over by the berries, I think. And we can make a blacksmith. Though we don't actually have a storage pit or a lumber camp or anything like that. So that's interesting. And we can also make... And we still have, like, elephants and... Look at that water. Wow, docks are big. Okay, we'll build a dock. There we go. I notice you can't queue up multiple units. You've got to queue it up just one at a time. <laughs> like in Age of Empires 1. Alright, so I think we've got enough to go up to the next stage. Also, the cheat codes that they have are all the Age of Empires 1 cheat codes. So if I use steroids, how that speeds it up. Okay, so Town Center looks actually basically identical. So Wheelbarrow just makes you a little bit faster. You've got Loom for Villagers. You've got Town Watch. I mean, you can see little bits and pieces of the game later. Okay, so we've got House, Mill, Blacksmith, Dock. Those are all the same. Oh, we've got a market. So let's make a market. And let's see what else can we make. Oh yeah, we can make a barracks. There we go, should probably do that. Okay, so we got small shield, we can make our pierce armor better, normal armor. They call it normal armor instead of melee armor, that's interesting. And we've got horse collar, plus two farm carry capacity, okay. And plus 30% production for farms, so 30% faster farms. Yeah, that changed quite a bit from later. I still don't think we have anything where I can drop off wood. So if we collect wood, he's gotta walk all the way back to the town center. Okay, so we got a spearman for 60 food. I'm just going to turn on the cheat code so things are made instantly here. So here's a spearman. Actually looks a lot like a skirmisher. But... And then it suddenly looks like a clubman. So there you go. And we got we can train a swordsman as well. I think that swordsman actually looks pretty sweet. And pretty tough. Let's... Um, oh, and I have tracking. Well, let's try some of these other military buildings. Because now we're going to have... Uh, stable and archery range, so I can make an archer. 50 food. Okay, so archers didn't cost any gold. That's interesting. And archers... Yeah. Hmm. Wait, you don't make fletching at the blacksmith. Okay, so you get fletching at the actual archery range. And we have a scout. Okay, it's just the scout from uh, Age of Empires 1. All right, let's go next stage. So I still can't figure out what the market does. So you get cartography, but then you can't trade any resources there. You can't sell and buy resources. Oh, what? So you drop off all resources at the mill. Okay, that's interesting. That's a big change. Okay, so what else have we got that's new? We've got a church we can make. And we got a Siege Workshop. Actually, Siege Workshop looks identical. We can make a monk. Oh no, I need more houses. Alright, so far you can kind of see... I mean, there's little glimpses of things later, but so many things changed. Even this is different now. So wait, I can upgrade the Archer. So he's 45 HP, 5 attack. And I upgrade him, 45 HP, 5 attack. So I don't know what that did. But now we can make composite bow and crossbow, and just like Age of Empires 1, as you research new units, you still have access to the old units. So it's not like crossbowmen upgrades archers, they just are completely separate lines. And these ones actually cost gold. Wow, crossbows are really expensive, actually. And everything, I mean, these are all just placeholders, right? I mean, they changed them so much between this and what we finally saw. The research mangonel, ballista, and trebuchet at the siege workshop. And we make these, and so now mangonels come packed. So you have to go unpack your mangonel. You go unpack your trebuchet. I mean, that part stayed. 
This is getting a little confused. All right, let's uh, delete that. And do we have an attack ground? We don't. All right, let's pack it up, and maybe we'll go and attack one of the enemy AIs, and we'll try that. And what does Faith do? So you need to research Faith if you actually want to convert units. Like, there's so many changes here. Okay, so you research Stirrups at the stable, and now we get Lance Cavalry. But unlike Lance Cavalry now, you actually don't have the extra range on that. And Husbandry is 20% faster at Cavalry speed, so the Cavalry is going to be pretty fast here. Yeah, Cavalry is very fast. Okay, we can also make our infantry faster. And we have pikemen and heavy swordsmen. Okay, and just sort of stand in Age of Empires 1 unit there. And that pikemen that turns into a completely different unit when it moves. I mean, totally understandable that this is how these games would be made. Okay, so it didn't actually used to be a champion, just went up to two-handed swordsmen. Okay, and then you still have access to a regular swordsman. Just these ones cost a bit more gold. So it's got the kind of that academy type of dynamic where you have like the uh, different swordsman line. All right, so the market still does nothing. We now also have a trade workshop. And from what I can tell, so you make a trade donkey and that costs 50 food. And then I think the trade donkey has to go to somebody else's market and then it comes back either to your own market or back to the trade workshop. So you had, like, the market just basically got cartography, and as far as I can tell, that's really all it did, although it has nine range for something. Yeah, so many things are so different. Okay, oh, now we get the champion. Okay, there we go. So we can make our champions. And 160 HP. <laughs> that's crazy. The champions have 70 HP? I think they do. So you can see a lot of the stats change majorly. Okay, well, let's uh, take our guys out here and let's go fight one of the enemies. Oh, I want to see the Manganel in action. All right, we got our Manganel and our Trebuchet. All right, Manganel and Trebuchet taking a really long time to get there. Come on, guys, you can do it. All right, so I set up my Trebuchet and it's firing at an invisible tower here that they're now repairing. And my Manganel, we're gonna move him up. He took a lot of damage already. But, let's see, I don't know what his range is like. It doesn't really give me any stats here. So he's 10 range, and Trebuchet's 15. There we go, nice. Alright, so this is the Teutons. They don't really stand a chance. I didn't realize they have a bunch of invisible buildings and units are glitching all over the place. I mean, it's an alpha, right? It's proof of concept. You're just trying to test out different mechanics and just see what works and what doesn't. And are there any other units? Oh yeah, so we have heavy cavalry archers. I'm gonna go back to my cheats here so we can get a little faster. So we have a heavy crossbowman. Do we have them out here? Mm, I don't know if I can find them. I don't know, there's too many different units and they all just can't tell what they all are. And we got a cavalry archer, heavy cavalry archer here. And we can get a knight. Knights are fast, wow. Very fast. And the Paladin, that looks sweet, actually. Okay, I think my three Paladins are gonna wreck this guy. Let's see, can I take him out one hit? I, get, I don't really upgrade any of my stats, so actually probably not. Okay, pretty close. Pretty close to one-shotting everything. Okay, one other building I forgot to make is University here, so let's check that out. So we got mining. Interesting, so you got your mining upgrades at the University. And stone cutting for faster building, okay. And chemistry, all right, so that one's the same as usual. And you have to research gunpowder. Okay, and where do I make gunpowder units? Interesting. Where do I make gunpowder units? Wonder if they're at the siege workshop now. Okay, there we go. So hand cannoneers are at the siege workshop. And they are incredibly slow. <laughs> wow, this is a very slow unit. And architecture, okay, does the normal stuff. Yeah, so much has changed. And we got a watchtower. Watchtower looks the exact same. It's kind of nice, though, seeing how 
they tried different things and then said, you know what, like it doesn't really make sense the hand cannoneer would be at the siege workshop. He's kind of more of an archery range unit, right? So then they move it to the archery range and they say, you know what, instead of having like three different types of archers, why would you make the old type of archer when you have the new type of archer? Why don't we just upgrade each line? Okay, and if we jump to the dock, we've got the good old fishing ship. Okay, looks pretty familiar from Age of Empires 1. And you've got sort of an early gill nets, okay? And you got a cog. Yeah, so this is like your transport ship, it's a cog. And then you've got the galley, of course, housed. Man, ships are big. <laughs> I like how they have the blue just kind of painted onto the image at the bottom. A little hard to tell some of these apart, but I guess, you know, very early graphics. Obviously the graphics came a long way later on. All right, so I think that's the tour. I, I think I covered all of it there. So now let's actually try to jump into a game, maybe up the difficulty a bit and see if it'll actually fight back. Okay, so I just jumped into a one versus one against the AI here and I started in post Imperial Age and now I have access to a castle. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's massive. All right, so we're gonna make one of those and I guess we're gonna make a couple of stables. And this castle is gonna take forever. 9,331 that we've gotta build and he's doing it three at a time. It's gonna take a while or we can just give our guys some steroids. There we go. And I can't make anything at the castle. That is so much larger. This is like four of the castles put together that we get now in the final game. I don't think the AI was really developed yet. I think they just had some basic resource gathering. But that's not going to stop me. Train some paladins. All right, well, as a proof of concept stage, I can kind of see what they were working with. And I honestly have a lot of respect looking at this for developers and the amount of imagination that you have to have to just fill in the gaps and see where this game is going to go and yeah and to come up with all the ideas and to see it go from this to the Age of Empires 2 that we got at release is insane but I think we should actually take a look now at I have another version of a beta so somewhere maybe like a year down the road I think this is probably 1998 and so we're going to take a look at a beta approximately one year later I'm not sure of the exact time but about a year later and here we have a beta, obviously much further down the road. This looks very similar to what we had at release, though it's funny how much the graphics are tweaked. And even in this, you'll notice it's pretty close. Like this looks basically identical to what we got in the final game. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of interesting changes they had to the civilizations. This first one here jumped out immediately to me as I was going through. Teutons used to have towers plus three arrows in Feudal Age. Not plus three attack, plus three arrows. They had four arrows per tower in Feudal Age. That is an insane feudal rushing civilization. All right, now how about this one? Chinese used to start with plus six villagers and also had 50 food at the beginning, whereas now it's plus three villagers and zero food. So you can see how much some of these civilizations have changed. Although it's also amazing how many have stayed the same. Like Celts haven't really changed at all. It's basically the same and Byzantines, very, very similar. Buildings, a little bit more HP, but a lot of the things, you're kind of at the point now we're actually tweaking some of the balance, and a lot of the things are the same. We kind of have the units figured out that Archer goes to Crossbow and Arbalest, and we are missing some things like Halberdier and Hazar, but we're starting to get, you know, you can see this is looking very similar to what we get in the final game. A few of the, the assets aren't quite done yet. Also, I just noticed we don't have any unique text for any of the civilizations. It's just not here at the castle. And also hoardings, I never knew this, used to give plus one range to castles, which I think is, actually I kind of like that a bit more than just the 1000 HP. Aside from that though, things actually look pretty similar. So the siege workshops, identical. Blacksmith is identical. University is identical. This all looks the same to me. So we're pretty much there. And I want to try a game against the AI and see if the AI's up and running yet. From what I saw, it is up and running and is actually very difficult, uh, or at least it cheats a lot, so it advances very, very quickly. All right, so I got a little game set up here. It's gonna be a Franks-Britain's death match, just a classic matchup. 
Okay, instantly you can see this looks a lot like Age of Empires when it was finally released. Still maybe a few things. Let's, uh, maybe I should put down a few buildings because this is against the hardest AI. Alright, so I got my buildings up. You can see that Paladins actually look quite different. Uh, I like the way they look at the end a little bit better than this. But a lot of the other units are quite similar. So, Hand Cannoneers look the same. Bombard Cans look the same. Champions are almost the same. A little more yellow here from the front. But other than that, this definitely looks like Age of Empires. I'd say it kind of feels like Age of Empires too. Just a little bit more unpolished, I guess. One thing I'm noticing is that some of the costs are significantly different. So champions are only 10 gold instead of 20. And that's a big difference. And how are the costs for most other things? Oh, so Bombard Cannon's a little cheaper on gold. Interesting. Okay, so Crossmen are a little bit better. So we get 30 gold instead of 45 gold. Alright, and Paladins are a little bit cheaper. So they're 70 gold instead of 75. Alright, this is starting to get intense. He's starting to come forward with all of his... They look like Siege Onagers, but they're just Onagers. Don't want to patrol, because patrol is a little buggy from what I've seen. And once you patrol units, they... They seem to be unable to actually attack things anymore, so I'm just not going to do that. I will show you something though, we've got this little extra formation, horde, where basically they just go on top of each other, and they just stack on top of each other, and it, it's just like they ignore all hitboxes and everything, so that's kind of weird. And we can also spin these around, so I can spin my units, it's kind of hard to see while they're fighting, maybe I'll wait till they stop fighting. Okay, now we can see. So we can actually spin our units around. I can have them about face. Some little different things that are interesting they didn't make into the game. I can see how that's not really all that useful. People might not care too much about that feature. Sometimes you can overload people with features that don't really matter, like spinning units around. Wow, look at these shots. <laughs> it's like the old Age of Empires 1 ballistas. Okay, so something... Yeah, this is a little weird. So when you have them attack something, they just all converge on it and pile up. So actually maybe this isn't quite as far in development as I thought. But we're definitely at a point you can play the game, you get a sense of the game. And look how big these trebuchets are. Do the packed trebuchets look the same? But the unpacked ones are just massive. I mean throwing axemen look identical to me. A lot of these look identical. I have to say I like the look of these trebuchets actually better than the ones we got just looks so massive and powerful. Alright, I think we're gonna have to push here though. Well, at this point I have to say we don't need as much imagination to tell that this is Age of Empires. The other one, it, a lot of the game had to be played kind of in your head, imagining what units everything is. This is starting to look pretty good. We still have a few odd units where units are switching into something else, like the Arbalest here. It's like a composite bowman, I think, from H1. Every time it fires. But we're at the point now, this is just graphics and like a little bit of balance. Although most of the balance actually seems pretty close. The civilizations didn't change too much. Alright, well, just as it looked like victory was assured, the game just froze. So, I think we're gonna have to call the battle there. Hopefully you guys found that interesting, and for me I think the coolest part is looking back at the alpha and seeing how similar it was to Age of Empires 1. It really felt like they just copied and pasted all the files over. And I think it's really cool that alpha and beta are out there so we can actually see the progression of the game as it went from Age of Empires 1 to like Age of Empires 1.5, and then finally into the actual Age of Empires 2 that we all know. That's going to be all for this one though. Special thanks to Jean-Paul, Samantha, Ben, Brian, Brock, Connor, Daniel, James, Kyle, Matt, I Lick Toes at Night, Noah, and everyone else on Patreon for their generous support. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.